Ladies and gentlemen, we have taste to our Oh, I got your tea or your coffee. I have water with lemon. Ooh. Lemons from my backyard. <laughs> Perfect. So good. Perfect. Right. Hi, cute friend of mine. I was just saying on here that um, yeah. we've known each other for a long time. Like, yeah. Since yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you didn't know me. You, I was twelve. I was. I met you when you you were twelve at a convention, and and your dancing was. Okay, we don't have to talk about my dancing. <laughs> no, we do. We have to talk about your dancing. <laughs> your dancing was like you know what's funny is like all the like all of the um little interviews that i've been doing now in this time yeah i have no words for a lot of things it's mm. great do you know what i mean like yeah someone asked me somebody okay. tried to, <laughs> someone tried to calm so much is going on oh, it's okay. what happened? well well first of all we're thanking you because like a, that uh, Tice is also a part of our faculty. He's our, obviously our star faculty um, who has taught at our Summer Roots program. Mm -hmm. But um, we're just so happy that he, I was like, do, do you want to do this with me? I'm starting to do this with, with our <laughs> faculty. And do you want to do it? And I was like, I don't know. You might be really busy. He's like, no, let's do it. And of course, the day that we're doing it, you're like doing 5,000 things, 5,000 projects. No, like, I mean, I just was back to your dancing. But when I met you when you were 12, your dancing, like in, in all my years of teaching, you know, you, you, you just, I don't even have words for your dancing and your talent. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. It's like, so your talent is like indescribable. You can't even describe it. Well, then you don't have to. Don't mm -hmm. even worry about it. This is, we're learning about you, my dear. But thank mm -hmm. you, Tice, because you, um, I remember you as a teacher. A, mm -hmm. I had a crush, big crush <laughs> on you. And I fought with Madeline Centron. Remember Madeline from Strut? Southern Strut, the Gumby, like, gorgeous dancer from maybe uh, I only <laughs> remember you. Well, you know, cheers. Mm -hmm. She and I would fight about who, liked, who loved you more. Mm-hmm. And we take your class in Los Angeles at Tremaine Dance Center. Mm -hmm. And I remember you, when I, I just was right there in the front with you and always ready to just learn and soak in everything that you had to say. I just respected you so much, just from, even from the very beginning. And I literally was like, and you said, and I remember, it's so stupid, these moments, but do you have, that, I'm curious, do you have these moments where you had a dance teacher? Because in my mind, you're, you're my dance teacher and I literally am 12. And you do the combination, da 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 and then you're like, a five, six, seven, eight. And I was like, I was just like, ready? And he's like, hold <laughs> up. You're like, hold up, hold up, stop. You're like, that is what it's all about. You said something like, th well, you being so ready. Like, listen, I, listen. I think you were listen, like, listen, <laughs> listen. Stuck with me, Listen, bro. listen. You know, I do this in my class now. I still teach the same way I did as a as a young teacher i started teaching when i was like 15 but um to me if if your walk if your entrance onto the floor isn't a finished polished performance what are we talking about <laughs> we're really talking about what, what is it that we're going to get ready to see but that's just how that's my mindset i was always like you walk in the room the energy you bring into the room it, and it's it, Chrissy, you're, you know, we both, we both had, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I wasn't there for your training as you grew up, but I do know like when I met you, I mean, you're one of the most outstanding talents that I've known in my years as a dancer and as a teacher, for sure. You're like, you're, you're so up there and you're, and you're the same from 12 years old till now you have the same mindset. And that's the most beautiful thing. That is the most because you didn't lose your sense of you didn't lose your sense of respect and you know bravery and it's about courage. Mm -hmm. It's not about the dancing all the time. I don't think I don't think because when I yeah. teach, it's not about what you're doing. It's about who you are as you or in, how you're being infused in the movement. Do you bring the movement to life, or are you just like um, what is it? Paint by numbers. I'm not saying paint by numbers isn't good and beautiful and great, but if I don't know anything about dance, 
I'm going to gravitate towards the person who makes me feel something. I'm going to gravitate towards where's the life in the dance? What am, what am I looking at? Why should I watch this? What are we watching? It's always like a question. Where did you get that from? So let's start from where you're from. Where are you from? It's New York, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. I had the best dance teachers growing up at a local studio, you know. I had, I mean, my teachers, I trained with women that, that were just like, they danced like men, you know, and they danced like women. They embodied the masculinity and the femininity. They didn't tell me, they never told me to dance like, they didn't have to say dance like a man. So they you got amazing to... training because that's the way you are, Tice. I mean, you are so versatile and you fucking dance earth masculine. I mean, to me, masculine yeah. or whatever, but you are. Yeah, yeah. You don't, you must have gotten that from them. Is that what you're saying? From your Brooklyn Dance Center? What was the name oh, of the yeah. studio? Horizons Dance Center. And, um, you know, my teachers would go into Manhattan, into yeah. Manhattan, take classes with, I remember the names, like, you know, uh, you know, obviously Frank Hatchett, yeah. uh, Ronnie DeMarco, all these that I, Phil Black, that I never got to take class with. But like Frank Hatchett was like a master of jazz yes. and all the people in his class, all the people in his class were some of the greatest dancers I've ever witnessed in my whole life. That's ever. from that like 70s era, right? No, actually, no, 80s? it was like late 80s yeah like that those dancers from that yeah. day that chorus line fossey dancers man they're no fucking joke but, but it wasn't even it wasn't even chorus line it wasn't even fossey these people like they were like it was a mixture frank hatchett had he had ballerinas top-notch ballerinas in class mixed with jazz dancers mixed with modern dancers and then oh, every, wow. anything if everything in between so i've always had an appreciation for everything that wasn't familiar to me who taught you that i think growing up in new york city where there's so much culture i went to school with every kind of dancer every walk of life new york city has culture so i was so you know and i went to the high school performing arts and i studied with so you went to laguardia i went to laguardia at lincoln center and that training was i was studying ballet all morning and gram technique in the afternoon and i was surrounded by dancers from every every corner of the earth so it was you know i i had so much appreciation and i and i just say like you know if you don't have appreciation and respect for everything else other than what you do if you're not knowledge if you don't have a sophisticated eye or like a trained eye i think what are we talking about like, what are we talking about? If you what can't appreciate and respect and have that knowledge, and I think that's why I love, that's why when I became a choreographer, I love working with street dancers because mm -hmm. they, the, the blend of what, how they do my choreography is so unique and beautiful to me. Because mm -hmm. raw. It's not cookie cutter. It's, yeah, it has a like raw, it. it has a raw yeah. approach to it. I, I'm all about the approach and- And the feeling and the life that they're bringing to it's it. It's the right? life, it's the feeling, it's the approach. It's also the, the, the will. And when I teach in class is that I think dancers, I always say this in all my classes and then you teach, so you know, and yeah. you probably say a similar thing, but just in a different way. I love dancers who actually look and take the movement and actually have an opinion through the movement. I don't, I, I don't gravitate towards dancers. Now listen, as dancers, we are trained. We're trained to want to please. Yeah. No, that's just the, that's, you, we want to please. So we even, want to, even actors the same way. Yes, yes. But Formers. I think I just, I gravitate towards people who have their own mind and stand, stand firm with their feet on the floor and don't apologize because then you have an opinion, you have something to say, and that's inspiring to anyone, you know, who's in the front of the room, who's in charge of the room. And it's, I think we have a responsibility being in front of that room. You, you know? do. So talk to me though, Tice, I'm just curious about the little boy. Like, you know how we all have that moment? So like you were in Brooklyn, and when was that first moment that you were like, I have to dance? I don't remember ever not having that. Really? I don't, and you know, it's interesting in this time, like I'm like learning so much more about myself in this time. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it's interesting. Like I, I, 
I don't ever remember, I don't ever remember dance not being at the center of my world. I don't ever remember, I don't remember anything other than just dance being at the, at the center and the forefront. And just- so Who put you into dance? What, how old were you? Um, I was like nine or 10 and I, nine or 10, I was dancing on Saturdays nearby at this place where all these kids would gather to dance. And then I went to go take a class at some point at my local studio. And then I went to the high school performing arts, got through that, you know, sprinkled into the theater world as best as I could. I was young, but then yeah. I moved to LA when I was 18, met Paula Abdul and the snowball effect and just Janet Jackson, JLo, Ricky Martin, and then snowball effect to a transitioning to choreography. Yeah, but there's a lot more like, <laughs> right. I mean, that, those are great highlights. I, but I, I, just briefed, I just briefed it for you just because I didn't want to bore You did brief it for me, but, but hold really up. Because I, yeah. no, no, because I want to get in because I, I, I respect you so much and I've always respected your work ethic. And also, I was just saying before you got on here, I'm like, you reinvented yourself. Also, Keisha just said hi and love you. Like, I love <laughs> Keisha, oh we love you so much. Um, but it's more about like, okay, so, so when the dream hit, you, you know, that's a, that's nine years before you had your first dance class. So it's like you, you hit it at nine, you went in. Okay, great. And then you're, did you see any shows? Like, did you, what was your first show that you saw the theatrical show, like a Broadway show that made you go, oh. you know, you know, it's crazy. I, um, okay. I went to, you know, I lived in New York. So theater was there. Right. I mean, my cousin, my cousin was an actor, uh, uh, on Broadway in Torch Song Trilogy with Harvey Firestein. Really? It's a major play, a straight play. Yeah, okay. He was in that, he, was in that. he worked on a television series called Welcome Back Cotter, did lots of films. He introduced me to, my, to the dance school that I went to because he used to take class as an actor. He would go take dance class. So I, I just knew, like I had a cousin in the business who was doing well, who was such an artist and so creative and such a good actor that he yeah. was like an influence. And then, yeah. And then I just, um, back to your question, I just got bored myself. I just got bored with myself just now. <laughs> what, was your, what was your question? I just was like, shut up, guys. What are you talking about? No, because you, you said you saw me and I was doing a play. Yes. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so theater, so theater, I was like, shut up. Tice. I love, honestly, so honest. So blunt, you're always gonna get what you're gonna get with Tice, which is to me the best quality. Because when people are just sugarcoating shit for you, I hate it. So thank you for that. <laughs> you're right. um, anyway, yeah. So I lived in New York, the center of the arts and theater, and I remember going to to see Annie on Broadway. And you know who was Annie? Who? Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, well, that's right. She was Annie. Yeah. And I and I went to see that, and then. Um, and then just New York being like the center of the of my world. I mean, I had auditions. I went to auditions for commercials and stuff like that. And I remember in high school. In high school, you did? No, before high school. Like I, you I were went a to child. Audition. I went to audition like at ten or eleven or twelve for like a commercial. My mother said, "Oh, you're, the manager called. There's an audition for a commercial. They're looking for a blonde boy." And I was like, "Well, why can't I go?" And she's like, no, you can't go. And I was like, but can I just go? At 10, I was like, they, I said, can I just go? Can you ask her if I could just right. go? Negotiating at 12. Yes. And, and my mother said, oh, she called and she said, he wants to just go. And she said, all right, well, it's, you know, I can try. We went. And she said, they may turn you away. I said, I don't care. I want to go. I want to be seen. They let me in the room. I booked the commercial. Of course. When they were looking for a blonde and you're at 12 years old saying, no, I just I want just, to be seen. It's interesting. I just was like, I didn't care that I was going to get it or not. I just wanted to go. I wanted to play in the sandbox. Yeah. You Did know? Annie do anything for you theatrically? Did it make you oh, want to like, perform on Broadway? No, I just thought it was brilliant. But I remember like hearing like, like, you know, we had albums like records when I was growing up. And I remember playing the heck out of every album because I remember listening to music and doing it, listening to it over and over and like wearing the record out. And but what I, were you doing? Were you creating then in your head? No, I was not. A, I no. don't think I was a choreographer. No, I was, no, I was, I was listening to how, what a 
part the music played in everything. I was listening to the voices and, and comparing the voices and the tones and like what was so captivating about the, the voice and what was so, I don't know. Were there musicals like, that you were listening to? Yeah, no, like, all musicals, but also, but also just like records of like artists. Hmm. And I remember <laughs> cutting pictures out of myself and taping them onto the records next to the artist. And I'm you sorry, hear, say that one more time. <laughs> I used to cut out the pictures of myself. I would cut out pictures of myself and I would tape them to the album next to the artist. Artist. Because I wanted to feel like I was part of that. And I remember wow. also, this may be boring to you, but it's I remember, I remember the, thing that, the thing that changed my life, changed yeah. my life, was seeing a show called Jerome Robbins Broadway. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The greatest thing I've ever seen, hands down, in dance. The greatest thing I've ever seen. And I bought tickets. I made my mother buy me tickets 17 times. But I think now looking back, I didn't know why I, well, also my greatest inspiration in dance was in that show, Marianne Lamb. Right, I was just gonna say. I've never right. seen anybody, I've never seen anything like her on two feet. Never. And, I've always and, it, way. and it shifted, it shifted the way I thought. She, her talent shifted my, my whole world. That's so cool. My whole world and Jerome Robbins choreography and I don't I don't know why I bought tickets 17 times you know like when people would buy tickets to go yes. see rent the yeah. rent groupies yeah. you know like yeah yeah I was that person but I think back then I think I was like in my mind maybe somewhere in my subconscious I was wanting to choreograph because I remember re I remember like downloading and uploading the choreography in my brain Mm. And looking well, at that, you're all... watching it, that was the only way you could watch it. We didn't have YouTube or anything. Because I had no interest in being a choreographer while yeah. I was dancing at all. I didn't either. I had no interest in being a choreographer at all. It's funny. I didn't so, either. So Jerome Robbins' choreography to me, un, un, ad, otherworldly. Was other Charlotte worldly. in that? Did you see Charlotte in that? Oh, yeah. Great, the greatest. Charlotte D'Amboise, the greatest. One of the greatest of, yeah. of all time. It's incredible. She's she played so Anita. She played Peter Pan. I she, know. I remember uh, seeing clips. I, is there? Is it out there to see the whole old version? The, not old could, version. But... Thank you. I think you could see it up at the Lincoln Center Library. Ah, uh, okay. That's right. Yeah, right. but there are. I clips. love to watch the whole thing. Yeah, the clips I've seen. I've heard. Clips. It's, just like... it's like one of the most exhilarating. It was one of the most exhilarating pieces of dance and theater. I think I. Nothing is ever. So, what made are your me feel thoughts on what are your thoughts yeah. on the fact that like I think I love about our art form is the gypsy art form, and that we look about like uh, people before us doing things, and we go, "Oh my god, I want to do that. How do I do that? What what can I do?" Right, and then and then that's you watching Jerome Robbins seventeen mm -hmm. times, watching these people and these artists living their lives and it's in this choreography and then cut to it's now you are that person dice people watch you dance i'm just saying like we become those people then all of a sudden because we've been transformed by these people then we become those people that people look at and then we hope that then the next generation becomes do you know what i mean i just yes. i don't know i guess i'm talking about the passing it on thing that i feel yeah like and i guess i'm i don't i mean i think like I don't know. I think the only thing that comes to like my mind is that like, you know, we just do what we do. And like, you know, there's lots of people who will reach out to us or we've, we've mm -hmm. affected someone's life mm -hmm. as with our performances or with our art or the mm -hmm. way we dance, sing or act. Um, that's really great. It's really a beautiful thing. It is, but I don't, I try not to get too caught up in that because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, you know, I post things on my, on my Instagram. I posted something recently by Annie Lennox, hmm. who is Annie Lennox. I worked with her once in my career as a choreographer. Really? Yeah. She's. The real deal. I don't have any words. She, and she said her words, she recently spoke on Instagram and said, the word celebrity, 
She's like, it's not something that interests her. Mm. She's like, it should go down at the bottom of the list. She said, I'm a human being, I'm an artist first. She has no interest. She's not even, she doesn't even bat an eyelash at the word celebrity. And I remember working with her and I remember her being in the room, coming into the rehearsal. I had four or five incredible female dancers. Yeah. Incredible. Taja Riley, um, Jillian Myers, Jamie Goodwin, Eleanor Scott, like incredible dancers in the room. And it was only the four girls, I believe, dancing to Little Bird on Dancing with the Stars. Oh Annie, yeah, I saw that in your reels. Looks yeah, amazing. Annie Lennox said, can I come to the rehearsal? Of course. What? She wanted to come and sit. She pulled up a chair. She said, don't mind me. I just want to watch. And she was watching and she's staring and she was just interested. And then she asked the girl, she's like, girls, could we talk about the heels you're in? She's like, she was interested in the little things. And then when we got to camera block, she went in, she said, let's everybody go and look at the camera playback. She went and she asked the camera guy and the director, she said, do you think you could take the camera off of me? Because these girls and this choreography is so much more interesting. Oh my God. If you just joined us, that's Annie Lennox, him choreographing. Wow. And you know, the, you know Paula Abdul is like that because she's a lover of dance when I work well, with Well, you've been around a ton of celebrities. I mean, you're, you, and, and, and you have a different experience than myself, than most of, than most of mm. the art, artists, even musical theater people who are like watching this or whatever, whatnot, you know, it's yeah. a different world, right? Working with celebrities, choreographing yeah. for them, yeah, it's... dancing for them. You've gotten to see that life that we, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've been around it a little bit, but not like on the scale you have. So I see what you're saying. I think you started saying, do we just do what we do? I'm just yeah. circling back. Uh, you said, we just do what we do. It's great to be admired and then it's great to pass it on. But at the end of the day, if we really are just staying focused on our love for the arts and the craft. It, yeah, it's like the, the, that, that's what I mean. Like it's, li listen, I'm not knocking anything no. about like being well-known or celebrity or yeah. whatever, or, uh, yeah. Because um, this is like, what happens though, right? Somebody like what you just did. I mean, you kind of idolized Marianne Lamb because of the work she was doing, right? It happens as a human behavior for us to go, oh, you who I do not know just knocked me off my guard. And super, I'm like- Superhero. Superhero, right? You become a superhero. And then that's not really reality because we're not, nobody's superheroes. No, so. it's beautiful to be enlightened by somebody's talent for sure. Like if I think about people that like, just shift me and move me and and mm -hmm. like move my DNA to places yeah. it's it's never gone to. Shoshana <laughs> Bean, Shoshana Bean mm -hmm. Annie Lennox, Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. Maggie Rogers, Christine and the Queens, um, Ben Platt. These are the names that come to oh, mind. Oh yeah, yeah. Charlotte D'Amboise, mm -hmm. Chrissy oh, yeah. Whitehead. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so many people that I like, and there's there's people that I don't know, that, that I don't know personally. But I'm like, wow, wow, their talent is so amazing. Rich, yeah, and so I, yeah, and I, you know, and I don't. Uh, yeah, there's so many incredible talents. Artists. I mean, there's so many. Incredible so many. Talents. So many. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Incredible. Um, well, when you got to LA, I guess what I'm saying is you decided to move to LA at 18, right? So yeah. you, why LA and not stay in New York and do theater? Well, I was supposed to stay in New York and I, um, I went to the audition for a show called Starlight Express. I was, I was like 17. I remember that soundtrack, that tape. I don't really, I, yeah, I, I remember it because Marianne Lamb was in it and a bunch of oh, really perfect. great performers in it. Reva Rice, um, oh, you know, Reva? yeah, like yeah. Um, Jane Krakowski, like all these oh, great God. names. Yeah, all these great names, and like I just it's was a, a young kid. Show. Yeah, and I went, I went to, I went to Central Park, and I was like, can I like work on some roller skating here? I just did it, and I was like, could I do like a, could I hold my leg up? Could I do anything with it? Could I spin with my leg? I whatever. So of course you kind of, Arlene <laughs> Phillips was the choreographer, so I went in. I. You know, I wasn't much of a singer, but I was studying. It was right yeah. in the beginning. And 
I went and like, it was great, great audition. She was really, she responded so delightful to me. Her eyes like lit up. And so, and then, okay, so did the audition, flew to LA for a job, for my first job. How'd you get that work. first job? I was doing an industrial in LA, it was for Levi's. And a choreographer in New York City said, hey, I've got a spot left. They said I could bring someone from New York. Do you wanna go? I was like, yeah. So I went. Wait, I, hold up, stop, you're so, I need to get back. Okay, so choreographer, how did you meet that choreographer that gave you your he was a job? He was a teacher at Broadway Dance Center. He was doing all these instructional videos. His and you were was, taking his class, so he knew who you were. I, I think I took his class once, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, and then I okay, so I flew to LA for a, uh, for this job for two weeks, yeah. and then during that two weeks, I met Julie McDonald. Approached me, she introduced me to Marguerite Derricks. Oh my God. I met all these dancers. I met Marguerite Derricks also choreographs now for Marvelous Miss Maisel, but she was known yeah. for her Austin Powers movies. Yeah, yeah. and a big choreographer of our day. Yeah, and so so whatever. So I was in LA, and I was like, you know, pretty like in like enthralled with LA because I had done you know I visited LA a few times but anyway that was all set up for me and then I was supposed to start rehearsals for Starlight and so you booked Starlight Express. I did book it and I ended up saying no and turning it down because and, LA felt right well Julie McDonald set up a private a private meeting for me and Paula Abdul I just walked into a room with her and danced for her and then Paula Abdul said, hey, I want you to do the American Music Awards, this very iconic piece of choreography, which Paula won an Emmy for. And I just, I just was like- Is that I, online? Is that online? Oh, Is that yeah. it's, it's The Way That You Love Me. It's with 16 guys. And it's one of the most, it is truly, and even Andy Blankenbuehler said this to me the last time I saw him, he was like, that piece, he said, moved him in a way and 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 t took him to other places in the creative world in the dna <laughs> the, the way in the dna the way i felt about you know other things in my life all right but i pulled anyways. it up the way you love me paula abdul the yeah. american music awards amazing because i just want to have it when i can see it later i just i think it's so great to research yeah, okay. oh my god so cool so amazing. you got to meet paula abdul just like that and then she. And I mean, Julie McDonald. Julie McDonald saw me dance in this industrial. Marguerite Derrick saw me. Julie, uh, I had a meeting with Julie right away, and then she said, "Hey, I've got a private meeting for you and Paula Abdul." So. Let was, me just get one thing straight. Mm -hmm. And I think that I'm right in this, and I'm curious if you can tell me if I'm right. You have to. You have, if you are so talented, like so talented and so good and, and was at such a high level like you were when you got at 18 years old, you're gonna work. You as a dancer. Yeah. If you're a fierce dancer, you're gonna work. Do you not, this is what I've been feeling inside my head is, mm -hmm. but I feel like with actors, mm -hmm. you could be the fiercest actor yep. in LA and yep. you're not, you know, you don't, you don't work as much as maybe somebody who's an okay actor. Cause it's well, television that, film. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. And but it's just theater, a, yeah. when you're, when, but with theater, right? When you're so talented, mm -hmm. that can't lie. Like you, you'll work on Broadway if you're undeniable, if you can do it all. Yeah, I mean, I think too, like the industry probably plays a part in that. Like, I don't even know if I'm right in saying this, but like say Broadway, you could be very talented and not book a Broadway show because maybe the climate of the theater, which I've heard like a lot of times now shows want to have someone, a dancer who actually could cover a role. Right. And it, it just puts a little more heat on the fire and a little right. more training, right. a little more training. So being a great dancer isn't enough. Cause there's, right. there's a lot it's, of great I dancers. Just, it just seems like nowadays, you know, just, so you have to, you have to, you have to do it all. Yeah. Yes. You do. And, Right, and also like in, um, I don't know, like in the, in the industry of like, say, if you're working with a music artist, right? Right. It doesn't matter if you're a great dancer, sometimes it does, but yeah, they want great dancers, but also that you have to fit the aesthetic, you have to fit the vibe, the feeling that, you know, the, the artist, whatever, you have to look good with other people 
it, right. it's there's so many factors that's why that's why there is like, so many factors i agree i do many, agree with that but i mean i do believe many. it seemed like was there ever i i obviously there's always factors but i do believe if if someone's a, a i'm talking about just the dance world because i only did the dance world for a very very little bit where i was just dancing yeah in LA. yeah and definitely aesthetics and you know if you look the part or if you're, if you're right or whatever and yes i'm a talented dancer and i didn't get that job but i think as a whole i think when you stick it out because like i remember jeremy hudson was even saying that he was out there for a year or two and he wasn't booking anything and he and then and he's a talented and then he just hit his stride yeah, i can't I mean, imagine jeremy hudson not working i'm just saying jeremy's Tyson, talent and one of what the greatest. you had to yeah. bring to yeah. LA, i can't mm -hmm. imagine you not working well, I mean, that I, good, honey, you were that good. Well, thanks. I, I got to LA, but I also had it. I think it also depends on who you are as a person too. Mm. You know, I mean, listen, Jeremy Hudson is uh, the most solid, dependable, talented, nice, genuine person. You always want to have him around. Do you know what right. I mean? On any project you're doing, he just adds to the the the, the party. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just I had I don't know. I just when I coming from New York and landing mm -hmm. in L.A. Yeah, it was so different for me because coming from New York, you have a different mindset as a dancer. Like in New York, we go to class. We do not walk into a class one minute after it starts. We don't walk in without asking if it's okay to walk in, there's high, high, high amount of respect level in New York as a dancer. You know, um, you don't, you don't go in a group if they didn't assign that group for you. Right. They put you in the second group, you went in the second group. You didn't go in the third group. You know, right. you didn't go in the third group just because you felt like it. Right. You know, I'm just saying there was just a, a different way of, you know, in New York when I was growing up as a dancer, taking class in the city up at Steps with all these brilliant teachers like Susie Taylor, Cecilia Marta, Fred Benjamin, Michelle Asaf. These people, you especially, you, you didn't even look at Cecilia Marta's class. Those doors shut, you were not going in that class in the middle of her unless you were a personal friend of hers that she told you you could go in. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I was yeah. coming from New York. So coming to LA was a little more of a party. It was great. It was a little more of a party. It was a little more of a free for all, whatever. You know, so I, I was just, I was so intrigued with LA because it was not the way I trained. You know, I was training with, you know, like the principal dancers from the, the Martha Graham Dance Company. Learning, right, so how did you adjust? Did you, did you just... I I was really in in like uh, inspired by Jackie Slight and oh, what she God. used to do with with men as dancers, how she and I was like because it was so different than the way I, I trained. Love, she's totally like. So I'm, I was obsessed with her, so I went and I got in her class, and it just felt like I was free, and I could just I just loved her energy. So the the it was. It was just really a good thing. And so, with her. I mean, yes. I remember, so I did remember seeing you in your scholarship. Mm -hmm. You danced at the scholarship show and you were the clown, you were the jester. Oh, well, I was, I was not were on scholarship. No. I was teaching for her scholarship. It was like the beginnings Got of it. my teaching in LA. Yeah. Because I was on her convention. Yes. It was the first convention I ever taught on. LA so, Underground. So I was mixed into that show just as a character just because yeah. and it was fun yeah so well you were adorable i still have i have pictures of that i took oh, pictures wow. of you like from afar in my thing um yeah. jackie slight gave me my first dance job which oh. was like, an industrial at 15 years old i was out there for a summer and she pulled me from the class and i got oh. to work with like nathan prevost and um best you know kelly sheeran and the best. you know yeah and it was like some silly sweet industrial in in 94 for the earthquake ridge the mall anyway yeah, yeah, yeah. it was uh she she was very cool i really love her style and that's what i keep trying to drill now is all these like old school jazz when i do teach dance it's literally old school jazz yeah. like dance lines and <laughs> yeah it's great i mean I, I jackie and i are really good friends um anyone who's ever like um looked my way and acknowledged my talent i'm still like tight with them. Marianne Lamb, Jackie Slight. There's so much Marguerite Derricks. You know, 
It's Margarita like, Bowl. Mm -hmm. When so you had a career forever. I mean, you, like you said, you worked with Ricky Martin and J Lo and Janet Jackson. What was the most? Ex what was one of the most exciting jobs you've had that you were like, "Holy cow, I'm here." Janet Jackson. Yeah. And Fosse. They mm -hmm. were back to back jobs because I saw. Were they? Yeah, I was I was on tour with Janet Jackson in in Boston, and I saw the out of town tryout of Fosse. And I took Gil Doldalau, who was dancing with me, and I said, let's go. We're going to watch some incredible dancing. And so we went, <laughs> and I, I saw the stage, and I watched Desmond Richardson, and I said, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that. And so I got off tour with Janet. I was in New York visiting my family, and the audition came up. I auditioned, and there it goes. Did you audition for Annie? For who? Annie and Ranking. Yes, I did. Yes. And it was incredible. And I got to do dance the percussion for and yeah. Mr. I wish I would have seen you in it. So we have a story a little bit together that you're a part of my story of when I was auditioning for Fosse. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad, actually. But it was wow. great on your part, really bad <laughs> on my part. But do you not remember the full story? It basically Long story short, I was at this audition. I took a ferry over from Staten Island. I, yes, had I remember all my, this. I was all decked out. Mm -hmm. I show up and they tell us that all the non-equity people can go. And there right. were so many people there. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I'm not leaving. And I and I go to the monitors and I say, so who, um, you know, I just wait and wait and wait. And then I call you. I call Ty because you're in the show at the moment. And I said, look, I, I'm at this audition and I can't get in because I'm not, I'm not equity. And you were like, okay, go ask them who is doing the audition. And I was like, great. So I go up and ask them, who's doing the audition? And they're like, Annie Ryan King. And I was like, oh, God. And I come back and I say, it's Anne. Anne Ryan King's doing the audition. And you're like, mm, don't think I can help you there. <laughs> right. Because you were like, if, I knew, if the dance captain was running it, I would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. then I said, okay, okay, no worries, no worries. And I did the same thing. I saw the show Fosse in California and was right. like, I have to do this show. I saw Shannon Lewis do I gotcha. And I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm just, I'm done. <laughs> you know? And I was like, and I yeah. have to figure out how to do this. Yeah. And I literally went into the audition and I, and as they, I, 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 I stole, I stole the card. I stole the equity card yeah. to get in. So I said that as they're walking away, I literally pulled the card that they give you when you show them your equity card mm -hmm. and I fill it out. I called my mom. I said, can we say a prayer right now? Cause I did something really bad. Mm -hmm. said a prayer and then I go up to the person and the monitor and I said hi my name I'm so sorry I'm number 101 and you said 80 to 100 and she went oh I must have missed I'm so sorry I must have missed no worries come on in <laughs> and I was like Boo! and that's how I got my equity card you know What's what I'm saying <laughs> I mean I mean you I mean, had don't, to don't you had to don't steal <laughs> but you had to do that I mean you had to get in I had to, I had to be seen you had to get in I didn't care if it was, I had to be seen. I had to go. No. I had to play in the sandbox. I was like, oh my God, I took a ferry. So you said Janet Jackson and was Janet really um, cool to work with? Like, was she really nice and yeah. kind? It's okay. like a whole other, it's not even something you could even talk about. Whew. I mean, that name, she's just music royalty. Yeah. I just, I just put on that song. There are times when I look up very young. I, I started using that for my thing and it just yeah. took me right back to like our time. Like yeah. I was lucky enough to be in that video. You know what I mean? So. Of course you were. So yeah, great. I it's mean, like the greatest album ever. So, such, a, such a masterpiece, you know? Yeah. What is your, uh, I was just curious, what is your favorite style of dance to, to dance? What is your favorite style of movement? Is there anything or like one of them? Your you know, go-to? I, I, I mean, like I, I could talk about like, you know, things that I've done when I danced for like Rob Marshall doing like Annie and Cinderella and doing the Oscars for Chicago, the movie like I, Rob Marshall's movement theatrically mm. just, just feels really good. Just feels right. Mm. And, um, and then you take like Paula Abdul's movement on the AMAs, it's timeless. I have the, it down to watch right now. It's, it it's literally, you could bring it back in 10, more, in 10 more years, in 10 more lifetimes, and it's timeless. It's timeless. It'll never not be good. It's like I Love Lucy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And how, so, long did you do, how long did you do Broadway? How long did you do Fosse? 
I did Fosse for probably like 10 months. Yeah. Was it, did it meet your expectations? Because everybody has their dream and their idea of a Broadway debut. You know, um, it, it, it did. I would have, I would have done it for free. Yeah. <laughs> Doing that every night. Like, that work. No, the, 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 the anxiety and the, and the like of doing the percussion for so I, you're like you're in the wings. And I think knowing the history of how Fosse created it, it kept you on like it kept you in the wings praying that you you didn't even know if you could make it through. Yeah. Every night you did not know if you could make it through. He, I think he intentionally did it, created that piece so that it left you like like that. Like with a if question. You know, those of you who are here, Perk Four is in the show Fosse that uh, Tice did. Got to play this part. Dev Desmond Richardson originated. Desmond, did he originate it? Desmond. Well, in in the Fosse in the Foss, in the show Fosse, Desmond was the original. Yes, originated yes. that. But that role was originated from dancing. The Sorry. original yes. Fosse right, right. show in the, in the 70s. Right, uh, like 74, 75 by a man named Charles Ward, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Who was an exquisite dancer. I didn't know him, but you know. When, um, when Broadway was finished and so like for yourself, how long have you had a career as a dancer? And then when did you start getting the bug to decide, hey, I think I could create and choreograph and do some cool stuff? Um, I was doing Chicago at the time because from Fosse, I, I, I did like, I jumped into like some, it was like the millennium, like the Latin wave came in. Jennifer Lopez, she had just started. So I performed with her and yeah. I was touring with her. And then Ricky Martin, that whole live in La Vida Loca. I was involved in all of the Latin. Big wave. time. Oh yeah. So I danced with them and then did some music videos for like Maya and a bunch of, bunch of things with Tina Landon as the choreographer. And after that, I booked Chicago. And did Chicago for like eight to 10 months. It was a great, great experience. And then while I was doing Chicago, I got a call from Nigel Lithgow. Hey, there's a show called So You Think You Can Dance. And I was like, what? What's that mean? And so Marty Kadelka, who was Justin Timberlake's choreographer, a hip hop choreographer who I had known, recommended me and said, you should get Tice. He can do a Fosse routine. So I flew to LA. I choreographed on season one, the finale, for two incredible dancers. And I wasn't a choreographer and I just did all that That was your first jazz. time choreographing? Yeah. On so it was for the, fina fin the finale of So You Think You Can Dance. It was for two people and it was all that jazz and I created my own, my yeah. own Version. thing. And, and it was like a huge hit. So they called me back the next season and they said, hey, can you do jazz? Can you do contemporary? And I was like, yeah. And I was like working every week on the show. Just trying to like- and Were you enjoying just, that? Was it fun to kind of create? Well, and do it, new? it was, but it was also, you know, pressure sure. because you're, you're in front of everybody and you're- it's, uh, You're like being a first time choreographer in front of- Yeah. Of and so I was just, you know, I'm sandwiched in between Mia Michaels and Wade Robson and all these great We've been choreographers doing who have been yeah. born they're born choreographers so i yeah so and so i just I had worked I with you season four. well you were assisting me on my emmy award-winning piece that's yes i was in the room for that you're right i have the footage i have the yes. footage that was a beautiful i mean but it was also what's her face was really a, heavily a part of it well, Mallory, Mallory, no. Mallory Esquivel, incredible dancer, and Mike Riccio, who's a producer now. Really? Who's, a, who's fantastic, amazing. We were all in the room. Yes, we were. Yeah. That was incredible. gorgeous. So I, have a, I have it on video. It's oh, great. I have to see that. Oh, yeah, it's great. So it's I, so I remember great. just being like, and you're like, I just remember you being like, it's okay, it's okay. I'm like, oh, please. Yes. I was just, pla I was so plagued with like, I could, well, you know, becoming a choreographer was a whole new beast. So I was like, yeah. I'd never been so in my head all the time about. Oh, you know, and, and I was so, but I was so proud of you to see coming from a dancer to a choreographer and seeing this whole other side, which is, which leads me to say that, like, to me, I feel like you're constantly always reinventing yourself. Like your work is so eclectic. It's like now seeing the work, like I saw the dance reel that you have of just all the body of work that you've done. 
The one, my recent 2019 reel? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The choreographer, the one on your website? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very, so great. It's like, it. holy, it's just so dependable and like dependable in the sense that I'm like, I just know what, if I look at that, I'm like, God, I could get anything with this guy. Like if I wanted to hire you, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm a big producer and everything. But yeah, you know, you right? are. <laughs> but like I, 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 I watch your your work and I just see you all over that, and um, it's it's so remarkable. Are you? There's a fine line between being, you know. Are you are you proud? Like is it not in like a egotistical way, but like when you look at the body of work and you and and there's times where you can reflect on your life and you look at the little boy in you you know, the nine-year-old that started dancing. And then if you could look back and talk to your nine-year-old and tell them, tell him something, what would you tell him about life, about your future life? I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I'm proud of it because it's, it's, I, I mean, it's a reflection of, I don't think it's a reflection of how talented I am because I don't know. I don't, really know, I don't really know that I'm talented. Maybe I am, maybe I am a little bit, but I think it has more to do with who I am. As a person, I just, I, you know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I think it has more to do. I don't, I'm proud of it because I will fight like a dog and work like a dog to be, to be just better, whatever that means for myself. But I don't necessarily what, know. What does that mean for yourself to be better? Just to be better than I was last year or the mm -hmm. year before, or just so, just so that I, I can actually acknowledge growth. Do you know, I don't necessarily know that I'm, I don't think about being the most talented because I don't know. Right. And I don't, I, I try to stay out of that. I don't, because, because I love and can appreciate everybody. I really yeah. can. Cause I, no, and I, I, know. I, mean, I do see how different we all are. So I don't ever, I don't. Well, it's I'm like not that gonna, thing that they say that there's no competition. There's only creation. Right. 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 We're all created so differently. Yeah. So like yeah. how we, if we yeah, start like, competing with each other, it's like. Right. And it's like, as a young boy growing up in dance, I always remember this very clearly, though. I remember very clearly not being competitive with other guys. I don't ever remember being competitive because I always said, if, if some guy in the room was the greater they were, and I was like, who is that? And how could, how could we become Same best way. friends? Because they're the most talented and they're so nice. We're going to be friends. That's, that was what I I thought. always wanted to say, I wanted to dance right next to them. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to dance. If you were the most talented in the room. Yeah, I'm like, come and here. Come and you were nice. Let's come here. Let's dance let's next it. to each other. Yeah, I never let's push felt. Each other. I had, I mean, I'd seen so many incredible dancers. When I first got to LA, the first person I saw dance was Aaron Cash, was this 6'3", tall, long haired, blonde Australian god. <laughs> and I was, and we became best friends, and we trained together, and we, in, you know, other. yes, and like, and I think about people like who, uh, like Alex Magno, who, who I met, and he was yeah. such an incredible dancer, and he loved my dancing, and when I think yeah, about like, fire. amazing fire. dancer, you know, just yeah. so many great dancers, and like, yeah, or even someone like Greg Russell, who was an incredible tap dancer, like, we became oh. friends, and like, yeah. There were so many amazing dancers. Well, also, there's something about competing. Like, for me, yes. I never watched my competition as a dancer. I always just, I really competed with myself. Absolutely. I just was like, I, I didn't have time. Better. I didn't have time no. to compete with anybody else because I was yeah. too busy correcting myself and there was so much to correct. So and, even, and even if I thought I was really good, there was always something that I could find. And that's yeah. where, that's where I think the, the beauty lies in just, and you know, just as artists, we're all, as artists, everybody, I don't think anybody's free from this. I don't, anywhere in the whole world is that we look at ourselves and well, not everybody, maybe some people have magic mirrors. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But what I'd say, what I mean is that there's always something we can improve, you know, even at always. the end of the day, I'm always like, oh, and I'll look at my work on So You Think You Can Dance, or I'll look at it on if it's on the AMA is a huge platform and I'll think, oh God, I could have done this better. I could have yeah. done that better. I would have, but that's, I think. That's all right. As long as you're not, to me, not beating yes. yourself up over it. You're more of a critical, like, okay, next time. Yeah, totally. If you can acknowledge growth. I yeah. think that's really great. Yeah, no, for um, sure. What, what are, uh, you know, and, and then just in like, cause you, you can come across sometimes Tice as someone who is untouchable 
because mm -hmm. of, of your career and, and what you've done. And what I love about you is that you've always been like, I remember feeling shocked at the way you felt about me or when you, when you said those things to me when I hadn't seen you in a long time and it was during all, right before we did all shook up or all shook up or so we did it. That we was did one so much together. fun. That was so oh, much yeah, it's fun. So much fun. <laughs> That's so much fun. That's funny. But I just remember thinking he really means it and he really cares and he's so talented. And I mean that by, in the sense that I respect your work ethic. You work hard. You, well, we, you're a thousand percent, right? And that to me, I love because it, it inspires that in, inside myself and like the same people who are, are like that. You go, yes, I see you. I see right, you. right. Because I can, I can spot what's, what, who's like-minded, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you're, and you're the same. Yeah. And so, but I, I, I do know about myself that I, I've heard through the years as growing up as a young dancer, you know, I do remember when I got to LA, I was very trained and I didn't dance like everybody in LA, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I had, I don't know. And I, I do know that people could, could mis misunderstand me because I was good, I think. And I think that that, that continues now in the world of dance. That's always been a thing. If you're mm -hmm. good, pe certain people are gonna be looking for the fault. Regardless, Hands down. they're going to be looking for the fault regardless because you're Hands good. Down. And if you're yeah. and if you keep to yourself, they're going to find even more, even more so. So so I just trusted that the right people were, were the right people see me. So I don't need to be I don't need to work that hard for anyone's approval because you are I already came in the game as a loser because you put me oh, yeah. You already put me in a, in a category. So I, re I learned early on that it didn't matter, that you were never going to escape that in the, in, in, da in the dance world. You can never get rid of it. That's, that happens today. And I always say that it's not, I always say, you know, a lot of people today or older generations, even people older than myself, that, or people who teach, they always say, oh, you know, this generation, this generation, there's so much talk of that. And I was just like, generation? I don't, I don't understand what you mean by that. Yes, we're living in a different, we're living in the year 2020. And yes, I know it's a different wave and different mindset, but it's not generational because dance has always been dance. Right. Dance was always dance and it still is. Like when I moved to LA and, and now, there was as much dance then as there is now. There was as much good and bad as there yeah. is now. As there is there now. was as yeah. much work as there is now. There was yeah. as much disrespect and respect for dancers as there is now. So where is the generational thing? It's just a different date. Yeah. Dance has always been dance. Passion has always been passion. Love for dance and all those things have always been. Yeah. So I, I don't call it generational because I teach young kids and I see a 10 year old who looked like you when I met you. So Explain to me how that's generational. Because the 10 year old dances like she's 30, like she was born in the wrong generation. And that's called love for dance. And dance has always been dance. Which and is I why we should have love for everybody. I think, every I think yes. And not knock it. Because right. it's, 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 yeah. um, it's yeah. not, it just doesn't help to knock no. it. There are kids just coming up. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. teaching all that generation yeah. now with Broadway arts community and yeah. everything. but. I hate this. This has been such a lovely interview that I have a couple more minutes and I just wanted to ask you one last thing of what you are doing. Um, how do you, how do you keep yourself moving forward and staying sane, especially during this time? I think it's just, I'm just taking my time and I think I have loved everything I have done. I'm so proud of everything I have done, but I have new, new, a new, this, in this, time I feel like I, I have different priorities now I don't you know what I thought I wanted to do last year I don't want to do this year so I've do, I completely I want to I just I can't yeah, regroup did you ever reach out yeah I, and then the, the, the one thing I will say that I do is I stay true to myself I stay true to myself yeah you do and I and I always I'm always a student mm -hmm. I don't think I know the most and I just move forward with the right people and the right energies. And I will, I am always, I've always been blessed. It, it, the universe always provides for me because I'm, I think I'm in sync with the universe. So I've got, I have different set of priorities now. What interested me last year doesn't interest me this year. I understand. Yeah. What would you say to, um, what was the one thing 
What's one thing your mom taught you? Oh, my mom taught me how to look at someone in the face and, and determine whether or not they were the right match for me creatively, personally, friend. My mother taught me how to discern and understand if this was right and never compromise who you are for your work. Yeah, you know, so that's why I'm not a yes person. And that's why I'm not moved by celebrity or money. None of those things. You know, I can make the choice. Yeah, I can make the choice. It's good. It feels great. I mean, it's so good. And, you know, because we're friends and thank you for having me here. Oh my God, I it's adore so you yeah. so much. And I thank you for you, always- You're the best, you're the best, honestly. Well, we are so glad you guys watched tonight. Um, we will hopefully have you back if you're, if this is even happening, who knows in LA, we're still open. Mm -hmm. August 1st through the 9th mm -hmm. is when we're, um, doing it and uh, in California, our summer roots experience. And so he comes in and pops in and does a cool master class sometimes if he's available. Um, and uh, yeah, you guys, thank you so much. Just keep tuning in in about 30 minutes. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Tice. Oh, that's Jack. So Jack is 14 years old. He's a tapper. He wants to be a convention <laughs> teacher. We didn't talk about the fact that you teach on convention. Right. Yeah. Um, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. What you're still you're still on convention, right? Am I wrong? I work for a convention named Radix with a bunch oh, of in, other incredible uh, choreographers and master yeah. teachers. Yeah. Ray is that Ray Lieber? No, no it's no. Just kidding. It's um. It's like uh, uh, Tassandra Chavez, Trisha Miranda, myself, okay. Talia Fabia, Chaz Buzan, some beautiful, brilliant, brilliant people and teachers. Yeah. Okay, so Radix, check out Radix because Jack goes around and does a lot of conventions. He's on our, he's on our thing. Carrie, similar. Thank you for this and all you've been doing through this, of course. So it's just hopefully that you get a lot out of um, hearing from a professional and someone who's done a lot, but also just to know how what their backgrounds are and that we're all on this journey and our journeys are so different and it's not to compare but to learn from and. Mm. Um, and also to know that like community and, and that friendships, I, that's why we changed our name to community is because like that means yeah. more than anything than any job. Um, Absolutely. It's about connection. You know, you know, I mean, I don't have to tell you, you were, you had the same mindset as 13 as you do now. <laughs> well, um, I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed it. T for two. Cheers. Cheers, Chrissy. <laughs> I love you, Tice. Thank you so much. Love you again. too. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs>